This video is a clip of a longer video where I show how to create this motion graphic scene from scratch. Click the card or the link below to check it out. We're going to mess with the color of our text. If I select it, of course we have the color here, but this is just one color and it's boring. So we want to add some spice into it. And the way we do that is we just use the white text as a mask. So um, if I grab it, I'll move that up and then I will um, press page down to go to the beginning of the strip, shift A and color. And we'll pull this up here like this. I'm gonna shift D to duplicate that down. And then the top color I am going to make uh, white for now. And then I can hover my mouse over here, press G and then Y, press 540, enter. I have 1080 as my height, so I wanted to go up half that. Now what we're trying to do is we're trying to get three different colors in there, but I'm gonna show you two first. So just, uh, we'll do, um, let's see, blue at the top and then pink at the bottom. So let's do a bright neon-ish blue and then let's do a bright hot pink, something like that. There we go. So this is what it's gonna look like now. And if we take these two and then control G and put them into a meta strip, then we can say, hey, we wanna take this meta strip. If, if I shift and right click, we can just see that. Or if I shift and right click, we can just see whichever strip that we shift and right click over. So we, we wanna take this and say, we wanna only show this meta strip where the text is, the white text mask. That's what we're gonna use it for. So select the meta strip, come over to modifiers, add mask, and then choose our text. And you can't see anything now because, or you might be able to see it bleeding over the sides, but we have to hide this because it's on top. So if we press H to hide, now we can see that our meta strip is only showing where our text is. And so if we take our text and we actually move it, uh, oh, we can't do it unless uh, we unhide it. So let's uh, Alt H, not double H. Uh, so if I move it over here and then I hide it, Control R to refresh, then it's gonna move it up and you can see now we can't see the pink because it's up here in the blue and it doesn't move the colors with it. It's just moving the white text. If you wanna move the colors with it, you have to do something else. So I'm gonna undo this and go back to here and hide this again. One thing that I can do is I can take the meta strip also and keep the text there, press G to grab and you can see I'm moving the colors around. So I can place this, bring this down a little bit more to like right in the center of most of the text like that. And the nice thing about this is it's in a meta strip, which means if I tab in there, it's gonna be still right in the middle, split down 50-50 with the colors. So let's go ahead while we're in here, I'm going to go back here and add in a, another color. I'm gonna bring this up on top and then select this, go to our strip tab, bring this all the way to white. Then I'm gonna hover over here, press S to scale, press Y on the Y, and we're gonna bring that all the way down, something like this, okay? And so if we click out anywhere over here and then press tab, then we're gonna go back out of the meta strip. So if you're not familiar with meta strips, you select it and tab to go in, and then make sure nothing is selected before you tab to go back out, or at least make sure if you have nested meta strips, that a meta strip isn't already selected. So right now, if I press tab, I go into this one. And if I keep pressing tab, it's gonna to toggle back and forth. If I wanna go out of the meta strip that I'm currently in, I have to click and then tab, and then that breaks me out all the way to the outside of everything. So meta strip, tab, click this meta strip, and then tab to go in here. So now this is what we have. So you can already see we have three different colors. Um, and we can actually take the meta strip too. We can scale this out here uh, how we want and move it around. We can also rotate it if we wanted to rotate it. So you can see already we get some really cool effects this way. Alt S to clear that scale. I don't want to scale it here. We'll do Alt G also. And then I'm just going to bring this down here, something like this. 
And I'm gonna make the, actually we're just gonna Alt S this as well because I'm gonna show you a different way to do this. So let's go to our rendering. I'm gonna right click and then duplicate this. Double click in here, I'm gonna call this masking. And make sure we come over here to mask and then make sure you have your render result checked. And come over here to your output properties all the way down to post-processing. Make sure sequencer is checked. I'm also gonna uncheck compositing. And then we can also go to render properties and down here color management. Make sure this is sRGB standard so that all the colors are standard colors. Now if I press F12, you can see that is what we see over here. Now so we don't have to keep going back and forth, I'm going to drag out another window or area over here and then change this to the video sequencer. I'm going to pull this down like this. We're going to create another one. And this will be our sequencer down here. And then I'm gonna change this to our preview so that we don't have to keep going back and forth between them when we are in our masking. And the reason we're doing this is because I'm going to come over here and then I'm going to take the color, the white color, and we can close this here. Press N to open up the properties, go to modifiers, and then we're gonna add a mask. But if I come over here to mask, and then mask, we don't have anything here to choose from. So let's come over here, and if I hover my mouse over here, scroll, let's create a new mask, and then I'm gonna title this mask white. Okay, and so here's our 2D cursor. We're gonna put this right in the middle by coming over here to view, and X and Y, 0.5, put that right in the middle, and then we can either scroll back over here and press add, or we can come over here and just say Shift A, and we're gonna add in a square. Okay, now I'm going to SX to scale on the X axis. And I'm gonna undo that just so you know uh, how to scale in Blender, it's a little bit wonky. So if I start with my mouse cursor over here and press S, then it's gonna be hard to scale. But if I, the closer I get, then it's easier and it's more powerful, it's more effective. But if I get too close, then it's, you know, it's really touchy. So you, a good distance away, so S and then X to scale it on the X. Um, maybe I'll get closer. Let's do like this, S, X, and then yeah. So see, you can see how it's affecting that a lot more. Okay, and so if we wanna see what the mask display looks like, we can scroll over here to mask display and check overlay. And anywhere the white is, this is gonna be shown, and anywhere the black is, it's gonna be invisible. So I'm gonna, Go back out of that, and now we're ready. So if I just press F12, nothing happens because we haven't added the mask over here. So let's come back over here, mask white, and there you go. So now whatever shape or size this is, that's where the mask is gonna be. And so if I come back over here and then tab out, you can see what we have here. And you can say, Justin, well, this was just exactly what we had before. Yes, but what we're going to try to do is we're gonna to try to fade it a little bit. So if we come back over here, you can see the, um, the retro here, the white strip that goes through this is, is kind of fading into the blue and into the pink. So let's scale this down on the Y, so make it a little bit more thin to get a good size. Come over here and then we can control R to refresh. And then we can see what that looks like. Yeah, so that's good for a start. Come over back over here. Make sure everything is selected by pressing A. Alt S to scale that feather. Now if it goes inside, just come up here to mask and then choose switch direction. And then it will switch the direction from inside to outside. Okay, and then now let's, if we come over here, we can press Control R and you can see it's starting to fade that. Now I could just take this and then um, scale on the Y like this to adjust that, but I'm gonna actually just scale this. So, so we can see what we see over here, just hover over here, press F12, and that will render a single image, and then we can place it better here. So if we GY and then put that here, maybe SY will scale that in, something like this, maybe Alt S again to scale the feather down a little bit more too. Okay, F12 and we'll see what that's looking like. Um, okay, well, so it's a little bit lower because 
uh, I have moved this lower over here. So we're just gonna do Alt G here. There we go. And now F12 back over here, we can see our fade. Okay, that's probably not the best way then to do that because um, we wanna keep this right in the center. So I kind of forgot about that. Uh, so I'm gonna undo this a little bit here to where we moved that. So keep it in the center here like this and the S to scale the feather a little bit. F12, there we go. And then again, keep moving this here out in the meta strip. Let's get rid of this so that we can adjust the position on the Y here, so it's more in the center. But to adjust the size of it, we can scale here. And control R, refresh, see what that looks like. Yeah, that's looking pretty good so far. You can, you know, mess with the feather and see, you know, what kind of blur you like. Um, but actually, I kind of like that. So we're gonna keep it like this for now. Find this video and a whole lot more by going to my new website, blenderfrenzy.com, where you can access lots of free and members only content, including extra tutorials, downloads, assets, blend files, QA live streams, and much more. Signing up helps support me, which in turn gives you more Blender content. So head on over to blenderfrenzy.com and become a member today.